Welcome everybody to a Cujo Sound and Spacer's Choice presentation of Game Audio Talk. This is where I play through a game and discuss its audio design. This series is about the outer worlds from Obsidian Entertainment. It's a really cool game and a big up goes out to the audio team and audio director Justin E. Bell for making this, as there are several cool things to notice in the sound design of this game. A quick disclaimer here, this is not a review of the game, I'm not going to bash it or anything like that. Even though we break systems and exploit bugs, it's only to focus on why the game sounds the way it does, how it could be made or solved, etc. Another disclaimer here, this video will contain spoilers, so if you haven't played the game yet, consider doing so before watching this video. And a third and final disclaimer here, I did not work on this game. If you want to know how the sound design of this game is actually made, then there are plenty of videos out there about that. I'll link some of them in the description. Now, let's get to it. A seamuth and occlusion for a better systemic mix. Uh, speaking of systemics from the previous video I made about the outer worlds is that in order to mix a game like this, we as sound designers have to create systems that helps us mix on the fly. Because one of the most common problems with video games is that we do not know what the player will do. Therefore, we need systemics to deal with lots of these things. We cannot just pretend to know what the player will do next. We simply have to control this. Such as sounds being automatically muffled slightly or simply disappear from the mix slowly if they are placed at a location behind us or as I've mentioned in some of my previous videos about Hitman and other things, if they are behind walls or etc, they get muffled slightly to create a more believable soundscape. Listen to this hum right here from the light as we turn around and it becomes an object that is behind us. Another situation here with more than just one sound that we could listen to is this kitchen here. Listen to these vending machines and the fridge next to it and how all the sounds in this scenes behave as we move around here. Once the object is behind us, it is slightly muffled and they seem to fade in and out of focus in a very non-linear fashion, meaning that it's probably not the attenuation that's just working for us. Wise already has a built-in Asimuth parameter that we can use, or we can simply code one ourselves, or have our audio programmer do that for us, for those of us who can't code. Asimuth is the mathematical name for an angular location in a spherical system. It's quite complex and often refers to angles or directions from one spot to another. Long story, Google it if you want to know more, Wikipedia has an excellent description of it, or check out Curtis Rhodes, the computer music tutorial, or any other audio engineering book they usually have it mentioned and described. We don't necessarily need to set this parameter on every sound, as in on every sound. We can simply assign this parameter and its behavior at the very top of our wise hierarchy. This means that all the sounds that function as children of this mixer here will also have a variable RTBC connected to it. In that way, it will automatically check for each sound how it should be muffled once it gets to the top of the mixer. So an object which is in front of us, which isn't mixed, has a parameter that allows for this sound to pass through without any muffling, and the object that is behind us has this parameter at a different value, which simply then muffles it, which is one of the great strengths of hierarchy mixing in WISE. This means that we can simply create two hierarchies, perhaps for one we call SFX underscore 3D underscore azimuth and then another one called the same thing, just no azimuth. Just as we could make one called SFX 3D occlusion azimuth and so on and on, in that way we can decide how a sound should be affected by it, also in case we just have special cases where we don't want it muffled. Even the same sound can be used over and over again with different parameter settings like these, and be located in different folders. 
because reusing an asset doesn't cost us anything, and you can simply just have a new event for each of these. Now let's run around the game a little and see if you can spot how things fade in and out and create a systemic mix. And that way, whoever at Obsidian did the final mix of this game only, only has to deal with levels and systems, making it easier to let go of control upon release and have the player experience the true quality of this universe. System. Kind of like a constantly live living compressor in the mix with a limiter and logic behind it that could automatically deal with special cases and so on and on. Systemic mixing in the outer worlds, a scene with end occlusion. There you have it. Thank you for watching this episode of Kujo Sound's Game Audio Talk about the outer worlds. I really hope you enjoyed it and perhaps learned something from it. If you are new to Kujo Sound and this channel, why not hit the like and subscribe button to be kept updated about how the sound design in video games are made. I post content for both beginners and experienced veterans. If you really like this channel and want to see more, why not head over to patreon.com forward slash Kujo Sound, where you for as little as $1 a month can help me sustain this channel and the time I take off to create all this content. I would really appreciate it. Once again, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again in another video. This is Bjorn Jacobson and Kujo Sound, signing out.